previously on Uncork. Becoming a master sommelier is the top certification for wine professionals. To become a master sommelier, you have to pass the master sommelier examination. This is the most difficult test in the world. It's 120 questions out of thousands and thousands and thousands. I don't think you've ever said, I'm going to pass this. No, I haven't. Um, I've had a lot of problems with getting them inside my own head and like almost start shaking. Rose petal at a uh, time. Um, just because there's so much pressure and noise in my head. Uh, gentlemen, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I, the table uh, needed a little bit of my attention. For the master exam around the corner, everybody has that fear. Maybe I'm just not great at this. As your friend, I want you to pass it because I know you've, yeah. you've done so much. No, I know. It's in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? Shouldn't it be coming to the front of your mind? Oh. You guys are both going to pass this exam. Okay. Yeah. On what type of spirit would you find the designation of Puro, and what does this mean? Pisco in tequila? I have Peruvian Pisco. Okay. I'm going to Atlanta next week with John and Josh to take the theory portion of the Masters. I've come a long way, and I feel ready to go. What is the mineral residual sugar of Daniels? 45 grams per day. This is my fourth time taking the Master Sommelier exam. I reset, so that means that I have to take theory first before I'm able to potentially take tasting and service in Aspen. What is a split vintage and what type of wine does this apply? They assume you're talking about split declarations for port. Um, List the classification and commune of the following chateau. That's the way, that's the way it'll happen. Yeah, or they're like, thank you. They will cut you off. That's great. I'm always nervous about theory because no matter how well you've prepared the world of wine from which the examination questions are pulled, it's a huge body of knowledge. Name three red grapes permitted in kava production. Trepat, Morvedra, and Pinot Noir. What is the minimum alcohol for the following? Cote Roti. Ten and a half. Hermitage Blanc. Eleven. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, Hermitage Blanc is... 12, Hermitage Rouge is 11. You got all of those right. Sweet. <laughs> Theory is so hard because there's infinite knowledge to know. You have to prepare your mind like a muscle. I will be shaken if I like go in there and like the first two questions or three questions, I don't know. Says the girl who's taking it for the first time. Yeah, but I've been <laughs> studying for a year and a half. Right. I mean, just demoralizing to have to wait another year to take theory and then a year and a half at the earliest to take yeah. service and tasting. I've been studying for the masters straight for the last 15 months. So I have not taken a break. It's hard to keep the energy up. Somebody like Jane, it's her first time taking the exam, but she's taking the preparation more seriously than people who've taken it before. So there's no reason that she couldn't be one of those who comes in and surprises everybody and passes on the first time. Can we just take it together? <laughs> Hopefully we're just overprepared and overthinking it. Yeah. <laughs> we should get some kind of gear. <laughs> Team New York. Or like um, Statue of Liberty foam crowns or something. So beautiful, man. Wow. Just Europe is a magical place. Oh, man, look at that. It's pretty amazing. Well, I passed theory last year, which is the reason why I don't have to go to Atlanta. And Yannick and I have this incredible opportunity to be in Spain for a couple of days. At the end of the day, you look at flashcards and study books and go to tastings, but this is the best way to study for me because it's, it's the most direct. I think it's really great to be able to go on a wine trip just before the exam because sometimes we, it's easy to feel a little stale, exhausted, and you're just like, why am I studying this? This is so boring sometimes. I think what ends up happening is when you go on a wine trip, you get inspired again. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you, Morgan? Yeah. Felipe Gonzalez here. Hey, nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Welcome. What's going on? So glad Alex could hook us up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Alex the Pratt, who's a good friend, he is an ambassador for the wines of Barueda and Ribeiro Barbaro, and he gets to send a couple of lucky sommeliers to see great winemakers, great vineyards, and what are two of the great wine regions of Spain. This is awesome. Look at white. Oh, oh, wow. That's beautiful. Where? Thank you so much. Oh, wow. That looks Look beautiful. Peace. Baby lamb. I think I've ever had baby lamb pate. Oh, you're about to. 
all sorts of new experiences. Wow. Super gaming, holy crap. I'm just trying to give myself gout, so forgive me if I continue onwards. You can have it, please. I have never traveled with Morgan. We are eating near him. <laughs> He's very high energy, and you know, I am high energy too, but you know, it's just gonna be a very kind of old man, young man kind of a situation. Oh, cool. Oh, that oh. looks like a cool color. Savina Dorado? Dorado. Oh, wow. It's See, yeah. it, it exists. I think it's my first time ever having it. Dorado wine, it's not a wine that we ever see here in the United States. It doesn't really get imported. Dorado is a wine that you would only hear about as you were studying for wine exams or competitions. Have you had Vino Dorado? No, I've never had Vino Dorado. This is wonderful. The Dorado is a very similar to Oloroso Sherry, but it's a dry, fortified wine that's fruitier than you would get out of most Oloroso Sherries, and I think that's because it doesn't see so much barrel age. It's just one of the very special wines of Rueda. Vino Dorado for me was one of those wines that I only thought I would read about in books. It's oxidized, yeah, it's got that saltiness to it. So obviously, if they ask you what Vino Dorado is on your theory exam, mm. you're gonna be all over that. I hope they ask me that. The reason why I'm not taking theory with John, Jane, and Josh out in Atlanta is because they still need to pass all three parts. But because I passed service a year before, all I have to do is take a theory and tasting and aspen. Seriously though, what's going on with theory study? I wish I could put a solid uh, hour, an hour and a half every single day, seven days a week, but it's really hard. It's a, it's a question of time management. You know, I mean, well, like, right, I, like you, I mean, you gotta uh, run a big old charity and like take care of the whole world because you're a saint. You know, for me, those, Two letters, MS, followed by my name, would not represent, oh, Yannick Benjamin Master something. It would represent Yannick Benjamin. He's in a profession that a lot of people thought he would he would not be in that profession after his car accident. That's what it would represent. And it would show other people with disabilities, like, oh, you don't have to just get a desk job. You can actually do things if you really want it. If you have the passion and the drive. Seeing you do what you do doesn't just affect people who are disabled inspires all sorts of people to do important things for their life waiter can you get rid of the dorado he's having too much of it now please <laughs> <laughs> These last couple weeks leading up to the MS exam, you know, I passed service, I passed theory. So I have just the tasting portion to prepare for it. I'm putting all of my energy into that and tasting a lot right now. What's up, Jack? How's it going, man? Good, yourself? Good. Thanks for doing this. I you're welcome. It. Anything you want me to keep an eye out for as you're going through this? And You know, boxes that you might see that are not being hit. I uh, actually already tasted twice today, but so I went with my boss and a master sommelier. I've had this time, and so I wanted to take advantage. So you know the drill. When you touch the glasses, the clock goes. Wine number one. The uh, wine is day bright, slightly hazy. On the nose, moderate plus intensity of developed dried out fruit aromas, dried yellow apples, dried yellow pears, There's a little bit of like citrus oil, like mandarin orange oil on the palate. Possible grape varieties, Chardonnay, maybe Vera based blend. This is uh, a Vera based blend from Spain, from uh, Rioja 2006 vintage. When you taste way too much, your palate starts to get weakened. My tongue is getting a little numb, and so like I'm not getting the full picture of how to get to a wine. Wine number three is bright purple with even more electric purple rim. Hibiscus, red floral character, a uh, little bit of violet, the uh, sweet thyme. Um, my final conclusion is that I think that this is uh, Barbera from Italy, Piedmont, 2012 vintage. Do you wanna recast that by any chance? <laughs> One of the boxes that I think you can really look to blow up and expand are spices. Is it vanilla, nutmeg, uh, clove, allspice, whatever those are, make sure you're matching those. Without doing that, I think you're leaving a, a big hole in that story. We'll never do three tastings in a day again. Smart. <laughs> really, really start weaning down on it. You're gonna burn out. Sabro was in the exact same position that I am in, in that he either passed tasting or he would reset. So if I reset, it will be very hard to come back to this exam. I'm just 
infinitely more busy with life and my job and, you know, everything that's going on. When you're out there in Aspen, stay away from everyone else. Be a hermit. When we do these tastings, you know you can come back and you can taste next week again there. It's the bottom of the ninth, full count. You get one shot, that's it. All the hours, all the years, all the blood, sweat, and tears that's gone into this. I am happy with the level of knowledge I have. I think I am there. I just want to pass. I think definitely one of the best places to visit in the United States is the Pacific Northwest, the Willamette Valley. There's just a real feeling of a farming community there, and you're an hour from Portland. And it makes some of the most particular Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in all of America. I think it's a lot of fun going to Virginia or going to the Finger Lakes from New York. If you want to drink Riesling in the United States, there is absolutely no better place to be. It's beautiful. It's desolate. The wines are delicious. The polite thing to do when you're there is to buy a bottle of wine. It doesn't have to be the most expensive thing. It's not like you're not going to drink it at some point, unless they're really bad. Um, but uh, that, that's kind of the polite thing to do. This is it. So that's wine country. We are at Jose Pariente, which is a winery in Rueda, an hour and a half by car northwest of Madrid. Rueda specializes particularly in a white wine grape called Verdejo. This grape gives off a floral aromatic, very citrusy too at the same time. Verdejo is probably most similar to Sauvignon Blanc. Welcome. Hello, Yannick Benjamin. Pleasure to meet you. Hello. Hello. I'll yeah. be happy to show you around. Yeah, thank you. Estamos listos? Yeah. Estamos listos. <laughs> it's about the extent of we've exhausted my Spanish now. <laughs> So we have different uh, white wines, okay. and each wine, of course, different way of fermentation and the aging. I would like you to find it out. Okay. Ignacio wants us to blind taste these wines. My suspicion is that we're going to see different styles of winemaking. The only reason wines taste differently is because of the act of fermentation. After the grapes are harvested, they crush the grapes, and they get the juice, and fermentation takes its course. But then, depending on how you want that wine to turn out, different vessels are going to provide different sort of attributes for that finished wine. So if you choose to let your wine sit in oak and let it age, you get nuttiness and the creaminess. Stainless steel tanks are chilled and temperature controlled so they can have a long, slow fermentations, so you can get more complex aromatics out of the wine. We could start on the left. Yeah, sure. This is three different variations of the, the varietal Verdejo that you've done here. Number three has the most amount of oak. I'm assuming French oak. I think one is probably stainless steel, and then two is maybe some uh, maybe older neutral oak. Any comment from you? So it's obviously expensive, like well-used oak. <laughs> Actually, number two, the fermentation and the aging is made in um, concrete eggs. Wow. Concrete eggs. Only concrete eggs. Wow. We were looking to make an elegant and big wine with a good structure, but without the touch of the oak. I like number two a lot. Concrete eggs are very much in vogue right now as like an experimental technique for winemakers. You know, it's not as fresh and sort of razor clean as you get with the stainless, but it doesn't add those non-fruit flavors that you get with the oak. We can have a look in the facilities. See where the magic happens? Yeah, exactly. Here we are in the, the aging room. Yeah. And here are the famous eggs, <laughs> yes. These are big. The challenge is to get the eggs inside. Because <laughs> there's no forklift that no, can pick them up. No joke, it's two tones empty. Wow. I can't think of another product on the planet that's like a, a more particular marriage of like person, place, technology, getting nature to kind of do a little bit what you want it to do. Yeah, yeah. But it's still nature. And that's the... the... And also the, the one itself what comes out of your vineyard. Yeah. Every year it's a little different than it was the year before. About that marriage of a person and place. Yeah. And hey, Morgan. Morgan. Can you Morgan. Can you Morgan. Can you Morgan. Can you it's, I don't think it's like telephone. <laughs> I don't mind him talking and asking all his questions, but we don't need to be saying the same things over and over in a different way. I mean, I can't stand that. It's a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I'm going to put him in there. Can I put him in there first? <laughs> <laughs> Wine number one 
has a clear white wine. It is a uh, pale straw in color with hints of green. This wine is clean. Uh, it's in moderate plus in aromatic intensity. Fruits are of a fresh, ripe nature here. Orange oil, pink grapefruit, green melon, white plum, moderate plus complexity, moderate plus finish. And this inclusion due to the high level minerality, the tart fruit character. This is an old world wine from a cool climate. Possible grapes include Albarino from Spain, Grunewaldliner from Austria. One to three years of age, high quality producer. Final conclusion, this is an Albarino from Spain, Galicia, Lee Spicious, 2013. Wine number two is a clear white wine. It is straw in color. Laura really graciously invited me in today. Even though my focus in the past few weeks has been theory, it's important to not lose sight of the other two sections, service and tasting, because if I do pass theory, I'll be taking those really shortly. Wine number three, much more orchard fruit on this wine, uh, green apple, golden apple, uh, red pear. Final conclusion, this is a Chardonnay from the United States, from California, um, somewhere else with the cool Santa Barbara, 2012. Your tasting is really, really good. There's nothing really to critique you on. I mean, the tasting was perfect. You nailed every single wine. But you're so racing. Like, it's like you're like, I wrote breathe, I wrote chill out. I think especially going into this theory exam, when, and especially before service, that like this uptight, this like, I have to be perfect. This will work here. It won't work in the other two exams. The only like serious critique I can give you is you have to believe in yourself because masters is a mind game. So like the only thing that is gonna get in your way is you. As hard as I am on myself, like I think I do deserve to pass on this theory and I yeah. think I've done the work and I think Good. I think I am there. I just need to I kinda believe you, but I kinda don't. Thing is, is that I'm overstudying and overpreparing. Theory is a very kind of current, rapid fire, reading comprehension and memorization game. History and geography, regions and producers, agricultural and farming laws. What is the alcohol volume percentage of this? Or what is the first date fermentation can start in that? The thing that weighs on me the greatest for theory is the time spent. And it will be liberating to put that part of the exam behind me if I pass theory tomorrow, it will be a mega monkey off my back. This is Provence, this is Costa. What about Pagos of Sherry? Name one or two. Carascal. Carascal. Anemia. There you go. It's crazy to think about how much work, how much sacrifice has gone into preparing for an hour. I want to walk in that room for theory and feel like my theoretical knowledge is where a master sommelier should be. And I feel like that. What is the grape of Commanderia? I don't remember. Your iPad's so slow. Your fingers are too fat. Okay. Who's that? Yeah, it's probably Josh. Hi. So long. <laughs> What's going on, dude? How are you? It's good to see you. I was actually going over the tests that we've been giving each other just in my room before, and it started to feel better again, so... I'm gonna, yeah. I feel like I just can't touch it anymore. I feel like I'm like... Yeah. I have sacrificed so much to this, and there's so much riding on it emotionally, physically, financially, if I don't pass, it will be an, an, an incredible letdown. Th that's the fear. That's the worst. You look very chill. I, I um, expected you to be a little more of a basket case and stressed out, so. I am inside. <laughs> I'm glad I'm hiding it well. No, it's good. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's good. You're good? I was a mess this morning. I couldn't even eat breakfast. I have no, I have no, I have no talismans to bring inside, so. I brought a locket. There's pictures of my family in it. Oh. And it was my grandma's before she died. That's nice. Yay. We finally made it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, grab a seat, please. 
So, how are you feeling? It was hard. It was very hard. Oh, boy, that was like a train wreck. Wine is super unique. It's becoming quite the world currency. If you have the chance to buy a couple of cases, chances are the prices will always continue to go up. The best way to pick out investment wine is to develop a relationship with a retailer that you respect and trust. Everything is a risk for sure, but I think it's a fun investment. Great Burgundies are always in investment wines because the wines are made in such small production. The Piedmont region of Italy, Barolo Barbaresco more specifically, are still very affordable for their quality and age extremely well. The one thing that's really, really important, if you decide to collect wine, you need to have the proper storage for it so it doesn't go bad. Keep wine on its side in a relatively cool, dark place. I keep wine under my couch. If you want to invest in wine, you're welcome to. I would rather myself invest in something I'm not tempted to drink. For me, wine is meant to be drunk. These are good theory questions. What are your four communes of production? Four com I don't know what. The town that we're staying in is one of them. But, um... Valladolid. 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 In Ribeiro de Duero, they grow a Tempranillo. That's their big grape variety there. It's a pretty full-bodied wine that's definitely kissed by the love of the Spanish sun. Some wineries will age it in French oak, which will kind of give it that kind of finesse, feminine, vanilla kind of note to it. It's funny how the weather shapes kind of how the wines are. It's short, hot, pretty intense. Like your milk. <laughs> you do know I like you a lot, right? So I hear it. Hello. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Welcome to Vigne de San Sol Hierro, a family winery. That's our house. Uh, you are welcome to, to be here. Yeah, so happy really to be here. We're really glad to have you here. Are you in a good shape to taste? Oh, yeah. Yes. Good Always in a good shape to taste. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. This is your barrel cellar. Thank you, yes. We only have Tempranillo vines, yeah. but the soils are really different. So, Lionel, he prepared for you testing some different barrels awesome. uh, cool. to see if you are able to discover the type of soil that it's inside. Yeah. There's some actual barrel tasting. <laughs> when we collect the grapes, it has to be separated by the type of soil. And then at the end of the aging time, we blend the, all, the, all the barrels and we make the wine. We will taste four. We have one wine from sand, another one from clay, another one from gravel, and the limestone. limestone. Clay, sand, gravel, limestone, yeah. okay. One of the easiest things we can say about soil types is how it impacts water retentiveness. Clay is very high water retention soil and tends to make wines that are very broad and sort of textural. Your big region there would be San Emil in the eastern part of Porto. Limestone tends to make very elegant perfumed wines. Your big regions for that would be Barolo and Barbarescos. For sand, they tend to make wines of some more savoriness. So traditionally, some of the greatest Chateauneuf vineyards are all planted to sand, so that's Grenache. And then for gravel, which tends to make these wines of a lot of austerity, a lot of tannin, a lot of acid in general, your big region would be the Medoc, so Poyac, San Julien, and Cabernet-based wines tend to do very well on gravel. Blind tasting them side by side and trying to say, well, this is sand and that is gravel is, is going to be pretty rough. But it can be a very good practice for the tasting portion of the exam. I mean, for me, it's, I don't get anything that has clay or gravel. There's something almost like, you know, still biting, where it almost leads me to believe that it's sandy. It feels like sand or gravel. If I was going to guess, I'd guess probably sand. The second one. Thank you so much. It's like this greenness which keeps the wine lively and fresh. I'm thinking it's clay, you know? Yannick convinced me. I'm, I, I'll, I'll go with him. I'm clay for this guy. <laughs> a lot of wine in that wine. I feel like this could be the clay one. Yeah, this one is the one that feels clay. Okay. I think everything has a good amount of mineral content, but I feel like I'm licking a rock right now. This is limestone powder, you know, like thinking about all of them again now. I would have to guess that one would be sand, two would be limestone, three would be clay, and four would be gravel. Oh my, you can switch everything around. Yeah. Uh, sand, one, two, gravel, three, clay, four, limestone. You kind of agree. <laughs> the first one was sand. Sand. Okay. Yeah. The second one is gravel. 
<laughs> so you're doing better than I am. Uh, the third one was limestone. Ah, yeah, yeah. And the this one's clay. This one is yeah. clay. It was really the first time that I had done that line. I think being able to see how different this one grape was from each other, um, just because the soil really was just um, very stimulating. Thank you so much for your time today. It was oh, thank great you. Great to see your sellers. Thank, thank you, you very much. Hey, what's up? I found a place in the area with real food, so I'm going to eat before I get too nervous. Yeah, I got a smoothie. <laughs> That's about all I think I can get down. Just call and say good luck, dude. Okay, you're gonna kick ass. Can't wait to hear about it. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. My name is Andrew McNamara. I'm the chairman of the board of directors for the Court of Master Sommeliers. There's a lot riding on today. This is an oral theory examination. We read the questions to them. They're not allowed to write anything down. We want to see how deep the knowledge is. We want to see, do you understand why the rivers in Germany have such an impact on grape growing? Do you understand why villages are important? Do you understand the why? And that's a key thing. Going into the theory exam, it's nerve fraying. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna walk into a room and get 120 questions asked me. It literally could be anything. It makes you not wanna eat. It makes your belly a little butterfly. All the hours, all the years, all the blood, sweat, and tears that's gone into this. I don't care if I get 100 or 75.1. I just want to pass. I am happy with the level of knowledge I have. I think I am there. I am confident in my knowledge and abilities. I really have to just quiet the mind. I think it's more of a defining moment. All of the preparation, all of the waiting and the anxiety is over because the time is now. I'm gonna just make sure we're ready. We're ready. Okay, you can follow me. Welcome. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm excited to get in the room and answer some questions about wine. I'm just trying to really focus and simplify it in my mind. You can tell this. Okay. When you go into the theory exam, you are alone. You're not competing against anybody. Hey, how are you? Welcome, Josh. Good to see you. It's just you and your brain, and you go in there, and I mean, you can hear a pin drop. Gosh, yeah. What is that? That's a gin and tonic, man. <laughs> Twelve ounce. It's like the sangria version of it. My heart is certainly with everybody who's in the land that are sitting this theory exam. Just look at the hard numbers, and of that, only eight to ten percent of those people are gonna yeah, So they're crazy numbers. Kind of scary, right? We haven't heard anything from Josh, Jane, or Don. Uh, I know how fierce they all are as sommeliers, so but I'm really hoping that we're gonna see some passes out of them. But I mean, the exam is a bear. This whole trip for me is it's always humbling to go visit the regions. Doing that blind tasting of Tempranillo grown up for different um, soil types. <laughs> so that humbling. Like, that was so humbling. But it just like reminded me that, OK, there are other things that I need to like focus on as I'm doing theory, you know? And not just like memorizing the regions, but understanding them and what, what makes them so unique from everyone else. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And I just got to like try my best. Before I left on this trip, I, I definitely felt that I hit a wall and I was just sort of a little exhausted. But this wine trip really got my passion back up and it makes me realize why I want to be in the world of wine. Even though it's a pain in the butt sometimes and it's very difficult, you realize that there's this, this whole beautiful other aspect of it. I think it seems like you got inspired on this trip and that's good. That's what you need sure. to do. I think a lot of it is how simple it is, like take care of people. Like the wineries today, they didn't do anything fancy for us. It was just ah. simple hospitality, right? Yeah, they it's, kept it simple. I think that's what they, they want in the service exam. You know, I've seen you do service many, many times. Presence, you have. Theory, you have. The mechanics, you definitely have. I just think that, in your case, less is more. Keep it short, sweet, honest, genuine. And I think once they see that, you're going to crush it. There's not a doubt in my mind. My passion and enthusiasm for knowing something about wine has gotten me this far, but to become a massive sommelier, 
You have to know all of the places where you're going to trip yourself up, where you're going to self-sabotage. And at the end of the day, it's mastery of your person. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you survived me. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, I mean, everybody has a disability. You know what I mean? My disability is I cannot walk. Your disability is you cannot stop talking. And so it's my job to help you out. You me show me. After the theory exam, we're held in a sequester room. The idea is that you can't have any contact with candidates who haven't taken the exam yet. Well, that was hard. That was real hard. I only made a couple of stupid mistakes. The pre route and the Australia were the two dumb ones. What Australia? I just, I missed the state. Um, the, it was easy. I missed the state on hilltops. What'd you say? Victoria. It sucks to miss questions on the areas know. that you know you're like really strong in. Oh, that's bull man. It is. That and sucks. Pissed yes. off. It's pretty excruciating to wait for the results when you feel you have done very poorly. I think the answer was probably the hills of Monforte del Pone and Classico. No, and Suave. You didn't get that? I didn't get it. You didn't get it either? No, and if I can remember that many things I got wrong, there's no way. It was roughly 120 points. Right. If you get 30 wrong, you're out. Right. <sighs> so man. Josh is killing himself over the exam. For me, I almost feel a sense of relief now. I did it, it's done, and I'll get good news or bad news. I don't know, it felt weird. It didn't, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that I passed. I feel good about, like, all the North to South questions. I can't remember any questions where I was like, oh, if I just think about it longer, I was just like, yeah. I was just trying to think, think of Becker's village, and I couldn't, so then I was like. Maybe you get a partial point for that. No, you definitely don't. <sighs> Being in Atlanta with John, on the one hand, it's really amazing to have a source of support from someone who knows exactly what you're going through because they're going through the exact same thing. But at the same time, it'll be hard if one of us fails and the other passes. Just so much time and energy over and over and over again. Like, do I want to learn how to speak French and Italian? Do I want to learn how to play piano? Or do I want to do this again? Seriously. Well, don't get down yet. Have a drink. Try to relax. The simple answer is no. I don't think you should ever judge a wine by its label. There are great wines with terrible labels, and there are terrible wines with great labels. With certain labels, you can tell a little bit about the ambition of the wine. Mouton Rothschild, every year, hires a different artist to make their wine label. So every single vintage has a different famous artist. I think Picasso's done one. I think you should read what it says. Look at alcohol levels. You get to know the regions and the countries that you like. To me, that's the most important information on the label. Hey, Dad, it's Jane. I am done with the exam and done being sequestered. I don't know anything yet. We'll see. Yeah, this moment is, is definitely pretty surreal. You're trembling and nervous and afraid. Well, you're preparing for months and years, and you essentially are being evaluated on that in one moment. <sighs> So, are you happy the day is over? Yeah. I'm super honored that I got to see you today. Um, I think the level of commitment that you've made over the last year, you, you can tell it's really strong. Um, you know, France, you, you probably know, your knowledge is really great. Um, Italy, the same. You know, I, I would say some regions, they probably you know, but you need to kind of put in the work and get in that extra level. You need to study Portugal and, you know, South America is, is an area of opportunity as well. But I have to uh, cut to the chase. Um, today, uh, you didn't uh, pass the theory exam. With that said, the process is the journey. It's like, are you a better sommelier today than you were yesterday? Of course you are. And yet I hope you had, like, you know, the experience that makes you want to keep going and push back and we'll see you next year. And, you know, next year you'll have the success that you wanted today. You know? Yeah. Okay. Well, great job. Thank I'm you. really, really proud of you. Thanks. Thank you. All right.
All right. It's pretty crushing to hear that I didn't pass. You know, I think the toughest part is just hoping you're going to do it and thinking there's a chance and then not doing it. Please. So how was it? How was today? Um, it was really disappointing. I mean, I, I, you know, I put in a lot of time and effort in some areas that I thought I was a little weaker on than others, and I, I didn't come through on those questions. You know, some new world stuff. I made some really bonehead errors. There was, you know, one or two questions. Champagne. Champagne. I mean, don't you live in New York? Um. I don't, I, I, the champagne question was the uh, about sugar levels. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't remember the, the zero. To, was it zero dosage or or? I think so. Isn't that like isn't New York the capital of zero dosage? What champagne? did I say? I don't remember. Yeah, you know, I I could I can speak pretty candidly. Like I, I felt like I really did a job, and and I'm disappointed. And it's it's not for me just kind of like a a certification that I want. I think it's. At some point, I really wanted to change my life a little bit, and it's uh, it's taking a long time. And um, you know, I don't, you know, to not be able to go for the other parts, you know, and have to wait another year. And it's not that it's any different for anybody else, you know. But uh, I, I think it was a hard test. Um, I agree. Uh, but it just, it just felt terrible. It just felt terrible. There's like no doubt in my mind that I walked out of there. I'm like, whoa, what? It was like a train wreck. We look at the scores from years past. I mean, we do. We compare. That's how we're able to tell you. You've improved. You haven't improved. Yeah. Here's where you were. Here's where you are. So yeah. This year, you improved. You improved. Looks like we'll see an ass. kidding me? No, not at all. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh you guys are the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are the worst. You did great. Great show. Come on. That was hard. I thought I bombed it. Nope. You acted like a master sommelier in there. You didn't know the answers to the questions and you figured it out. Holy That's amazing. Woo! <laughs> Hello? I passed. Oh, you passed? <laughs> yes, I passed. Oh, <laughs> I was more convinced than last year that I hadn't passed. Oh my God, Bob. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for us, for us, for us. Yep, for us. Oh my God. Oh my yeah, God. I'm a totally like in an alternate universe right now. Don't really think that just happened. Um, and unfortunately, John did not pass. Oh my God. Which is. Oh. Which doesn't make any sense to me at all. And then Jane, I feel, is the best prepared of any of us. And she's about to head in and get her results. Thank you. So, how are you feeling? Okay, you know, uh... First time taking it, it was hard. It was very hard. It's a master. Um, yeah, it should be. It should be hard. <laughs> it was obvious that you were well studied and that you had really spent a lot of time preparing. You have a really great command of certain subjects. It's not just rhetoric. For a first time, it was pretty astounding performance. It was very strong. Unfortunately, Dane, it wasn't enough. Um, so it is not a successful day but it was a very strong performance. The Court of National Ways is very lucky to have you interested in our little program. Thank you. It's been an amazing experience. Amazing. We'll see you again. You'll get it. You're a rock star. You're close. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm devastated. It's really tough, and I know I, I wasn't there. Um, but I'll do it again. Hey, 
Huge thanks to all of you, first and foremost, for coming out, for putting it out there. Uh, the passion that we see and the passion that we saw, whether you were successful or not, it's contagious. Go back to your lives, uh, reassess where you're at, whether you got over today or not. And uh, please utilize every master in this room in terms of focusing your attack for when you do nail this thing. Where is Josh? In there, probably. Yeah. You passed also. Yes. Good job, dude. Yeah, congratulations. Where, where are you from? Asheville. Oh, nice, man. Safety back is last year, which is fine. No? Oh. Did you pass? I did. Such a piece of shit. I don't know how that happens. Oh, it's not right. It's not right. I don't know how that happens. Were you, like, painfully obnoxiously close? I don't know. They said it was a very strong performance, astounding for the first time, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? Jane not passing as a surprise to me. I thought she was as well or better prepared than I was. We've been studying together for the better part of two years. She's my friend kind of just doesn't feel the way I pictured it would be without her going to Aspen. There's no way that I should pass and you shouldn't pass. I have never worked so hard and so long for something and not achieved it. This is a journey. Yeah. It's not a hike, it's a journey. The day will come. And that day you'll know you're in there. Okay? You're always excited to be in Aspen because it's beautiful, but I hope this is the last time that I'm coming to Aspen to take the Master Soleil exam. This is the very top of the game. If I'm not able to keep my anxiety in check, I'll get in my head and cause a downward spiral. You're walking into this, like, situation of fear. Let's go through the results. I would be set if I don't pass. If you don't think you're a master, guess what? You're never going to be a master. If I can pull it off, it'll be the greatest achievement of my life.